Well, we are going to continue moving down the aisle here at the convention. And coming up next, I'm going to pass things off to Zach, who has a very interesting interview with the keynote speaker here at this convention. Steve Scheibner would have been on one of the 9-11 flights had things not changed for his schedule. Zach? Well, thank you, Jennifer. That's right. I'm just down the hallway here in front of the Character Health booth, which we'll talk about in just a moment with our keynote speakers, Steve and Megan Scheibner. And first, before we do get to the Character Health, Steve, you've got an incredible story right. and a background story that we did just mention um, regarding 9-11, don't you? Right. I was originally scheduled to be the co-pilot on the first airplane that was hijacked on September 11th, and that was American Airlines Flight 11. It was the first one that departed out of Boston. And uh, over the years, I'm still a pilot with American Airlines, but I was a reserve pilot. And uh, that flight had no co-pilot assigned to it the day before. And so at 3 o'clock on the 10th of September, uh, crew scheduling at American Airlines would go and, and they would assign a, a, the final pilot to that trip. And I was the only guy available to fill in that day. And so the computer automatically assigned my name at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the 10th. And then a senior pilot to me, a guy by the name of Tom McGinnis, uh, Tom was celebrating his 42nd birthday on the 10th of September with his wife and his children. Uh, Tom went, ran over to the computer about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, logged in to see if there was any available flying for the next day. It was kind of an afterthought for him. And uh, he saw my name assigned, but he saw a little code next to it that said they hadn't called to confirm it yet. And he called down to Dallas real fast and said, hey, is it too late for me to grab that trip? And they said, no. And he said, well, let me talk to my wife. He talked to his wife, called back, and uh, they erased my name from the trip, and they put Tom's on it, and the, the rest is history. Yeah. So at what point did you realize that, you know, that flight was the one that you could have been more assigned to? Well, it was later on on the, on the 11th, because like everybody else, I was watching September 11th unfold on the TV. And later on that evening, about, about 7 o'clock at night on the 11th, I went back to the computer, because I, I thought, I probably know the, the crews that were on those flights. They're all based in Boston. And... So I logged in like I did the day before, where my name had been assigned to the flight. And this time, when the screen came up in front of me, where my name had been 24 hours prior to that, now there was no names at all. They had all been scrubbed off the flight. And all it said was sequence failed continuity, which at the, at the airlines means that the flight didn't make it to its destination. And that's a huge understatement. But when I saw the screen visually, it occurred to me that, that that's the flight I had packed my bags for and that somebody else had you know, taken my place. Really incredible to be seconds away, really, from yeah. being confirmed for that site. And you, you have the book. You do have a book regarding kind of the story from your point of view. Is that right? We do. It was uh, in 2010, uh, 2011. Right. Uh, a film came out, In My Seat, that's a 15-minute documentary that shares our story with interviews of the two of us. And after the film came out, people began to email us saying, you know, who are you people and, uh, and why do you do what you do? And so we were contacted by a literary agent who asked me to write the book. And it, it really is the story of how God takes an unsaved young man, which Steve was, and, and an unsaved girl and brings them together and, and um, puts oil in their lamp. And, and the catalyst that was September 11th that really has started our ministry and opened up doors around the, um, well, around the United States and around the world at this point. Well, the 9-11 the story, just a, a small bit of your backstory. You guys have been uh, involved in church planting, I understand, right. and, and different ministry aspects there. And now you've moved into a new venture, Character Health. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. Well, our mission at Character Health, we really believe that the American family is in crisis in a lot of ways. I mean, all you have to do is go to the local restaurant to see that the behavior issues abound, right? Yeah. And so, you know, on September 11th, 2001, we were very passionate about the Scheibners and our family. Now we're really passionate about the American family and really reaching out to the American family with discipleship materials and, and a, a way for parents to be able to raise their children in a 21st century that makes sense, that raises the standard. And so we've created this thing called the Nine Practices of the Proactive Parent. It's available on DVD. We've got lots of other resources that come alongside that main course. We travel to all sorts of conferences and conventions teaching you know, live uh, audiences as well. But we've been literally all around the world um, you know, teaching parents of tens of thousands now we've been in front of uh, to help parents get equipped, really to equip parents, I guess, to train a new generation of courageous, Christ-like, what we call character-healthy leaders. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about. At the end of the day, everybody loves their kids and they want the best for them. And we like to come alongside and help parents in that venture. Oh, great. And if I'm a parent out there, what does that look like as far as the course 
and how can they find out more information? Well, we use the word Christ-like. Uh, it's kind of a nebulous term, and so we try to define that. It's, it's the character that Christ had. So it's the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. It's compassion, it's humility, it's courage, honor, commitment. And how do we teach those things to our kids? So the main event is really the, the video course, which is a 10-week small group study. And then we have books and other DVDs that come alongside. We want to disciple parents because we believe that as Christians, we are to disciple our children, and then they are to go out and disciple others. And we have this treasure that we can pass on to others. And so that's our desire, is to pass on the treasure through the teaching of Character Health. Is there a website or some place that they can find more information? Right, yeah, it's just the name characterhealth.com, oh, so it's pretty easy. Yeah. All you got to do is be able to spell character like you're a character, and health like uh, physical health, characterhealth.com. All right, well, Steve and Megan Schneibner, we thank you so much for your ministry and sharing your story with us here at the CHEO Convention. It's a pleasure. Great, thank you. All right, that's going to do it here for us. We're going to send it back to you, Mark and Andy.